So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Britain dropping the demand that the role of the European Court of Justice be removed from the Northern Ireland Protocol. So shouts out to the person who sent me this. You know who you are. I really appreciate you sending me stuff like this. It makes it really helps uh, with the channel and for me to actually cover more interesting stories. So thank you. You know who you are. Britain has dropped its demand that the role of the European Court of Justice be removed from the Northern Ireland Protocol in its negotiations with the European Commission. So this was one of the big red lines Frost had um, for the last three months now. He pulled out of nowhere and the EU were like, this has never been an issue before. What the hell? And the Frost was like, oh, this has been an issue for me, bro. You know, you got to sort this stuff out. And uh, yeah, so... Anyways, a, you know, me, Craig, and then went to the Safeway and decided the, uh, the the European Court of Justice a big problem for us and that. So a senior British government official said London still believed the protocol's governance arrangements were unsustainable in the long term. They acknowledged the commission had no mandate to renegotiate the protocol. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because what they're basically acknowledging is the fact that the EU has to sort of the EU Commission have to work within the lines of the Northern Ireland Protocol then, because he's saying the Commission has no mandate to renegotiate the protocol. So they finally get it now. They finally understand it. Really, it took this long a year for them to figure out the Commission has no mandate to renegotiate the Northern Ireland Protocol. It can only draw within the lines. The thing they've been telling you for the last seven months, honestly, man. God, that is oh, that's scary, isn't it? The official said British negotiators had made an important shift in their position recently, so they are no longer insisting on solving the governance issues for now, issues now, and were content to focus on the practical problems, which finally, finally, they're deciding on. The official acknowledged that the government commission had no mandate to negotiate the protocol and was not going to get the green light to do so from EU leaders because they're going to say no we only agreed to this about two years ago we're not going to renegotiate it are you stupid Britain has now agreed to limit the negotiations to issue both sides um, agree are creating difficulties such as access to medicines and the burdens of customs and regulatory checks on goods which was what this stuff was always about you know medicines goods um, slight sovereignty stuff but that's more red herring these things were the key here you know getting goods into Northern Ireland Brexit minister Iceman has stressed on a number of occasions that the sun is too powerful and is melting him. Since the summer, the importance of addressing the role of the ECJ in the protocol. In recent weeks, Lord Frost has toned down his rhetoric, mainly probably due to the Americans and him realising he's not going to get more concessions than he has now, about unilaterally suspending parts of the protocol by triggering Article 16. And the EU have given him a way out here to make him look like he was victorious. You know, by giving him cons like you know options on medicines and things like that, he has now removed a major stumbling block in the way of an agreement by effectively taking the governance issue off the table. So Lord Frost sets a red line and then gets rid of the red line to make it look like the EU have conceded. The official declined to say if Britain had long fingered its demand for changes to <laughs> don't the phrasing here. Like guys, stop! Don't 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 use phrases like long fingered, please its demand for changes to Article 16 of the protocol which can apply to EU state aid rules to measures affecting trade between Northern Ireland and the EU. Um, British negotiators continue to insist the European Commission's proposals to reduce the checks don't go far enough. The official characterised dropping Britain's demand on the ECJ as a response to the Commission's move uh, to challenge to change EU rules that the supply of medicines to Northern Ireland can be guaranteed. Um, but they did kind of almost agreed to that anyways before so it's not like you've got a major concession out of the EU on medicines I think Sefcovic was fairly close to that position anyways adding that both sides original proposals had been opening positions and expressing the hope that the British concession would unlock more progress so this is Sefcovic tweeting or on Twitter met David G.H. Frost or sorry, yeah, G.H. Frost to discuss EU package of solutions for NI. It's crunch time for medicines with the Commission ready to amend EU legislation. We continue to work hard um, on our proposals for the real benefit of all communities in NI. Next week we'll speak on 15th plus 17th of December. So good stuff. Negotiations are getting somewhere. Frost said he and Sefcovic had not reached an agreement on the protocol after their online meeting on Friday, but it feels like they're getting closer to um, some sort of um, agreement. Sefcovic, or 
said it's crunch time for medicines with the European Commission to amend legislation. Mentioned that EU officials have made it clear to Frost that triggering Article 16 could lead to the termination of the TCA, um, aka the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, aka that stops tariffs going on our goods being exported to the EU. So um, we go on. There's a bit of tw- uh, twittering. So we got the Iceman tweeting. Um, Sefcovich and I met by video today to wrap up this week's talks uh, process about Northern, the Northern Ireland Protocol. We have made further limited progress on medicines. But we have not reached an agreement. I underlined the, move, the need for movement on all difficult issues created by the protocol, including customs, agri-food rules, subsidy policies, VAT, exercise and governance, including the ECJ. We will not find a durable solution that does not deal with all these problems. I mean, you're going to find a durable solution for all of those except from the uh, the court bit. Intensive talks will continue this coming week. Uh, Sefcovic and I will talk twice to steer the process. So there's a bit more, there's some more interesting stuff here. This is from Stephanie Bolzen um, saying, remarkable change of tone by the government, UK government regarding um, talks with the EU protocol. Nobody on Belfast streets in, is protesting to get rid of the ECJ. We now focus on medicines and customs because medicines and customs are the things that businesses within um, Northern Ireland would be complaining about. No one in the streets would know or care about the ECJ that much. So this point here she makes is phenomenal. Want to make this work in negotiations with the EU. A senior um, negotiator is happy to be quoted by the EU media. Happy to be quoted that no one on Belfast streets want to get rid of the ECJ. So that tells you that's a Frost issue. Frost might have been doing this to get further concessions as we mentioned. But he didn't get a ton more out of it did he? Especially because the next time he comes out with, oh yeah, we won't get you to get rid of the ECJ, they're just going to be like, no. Um, says London was keen, so this is that person they're quoting, says London was keen to find it pragmatic solutions and accept EU Commission has no mandate to renegotiate withdrawal agreement to remove ECJ oversight for now, as if protocol works as advertised, it can provide advantages for the Northern Ireland economy. Northern Ireland doing far better in terms of recovery than the rest of GB, and you know if the UK actually puts in the border facilities needed, it would vastly help the situation in Northern Ireland. But clearly Boris Johnson nor Edward Poots want to do that. I wasn't too familiar with Stephanie Bolzen, but we go to Peter Foster, who works for the FT, who I've cited a couple of times, but uh, I wish I had an FT membership so I could look at this stuff more. Him saying, so screeching row, uh, row back now on way um, on this briefing. Um, UK government spokesperson, inaccurate characterization of our position. Well, you know. Clearly, you're trying to be defensive here because you're scared the DUP are going to be like, yo, what the hell, man? But, uh, yeah. But Stephanie Bolzen is a top-notch reporter. Is properly sourced. That wasn't some random UK official. So deeply revealing, If even if it's now being taken back. So, clearly, someone was happy to go on record to say that no one on Belfast streets cares about the ECJ and they want to focus on medicines and customs. And now the spokesperson is saying, oh, actually, that's not the case because they have to row it back because no doubt Frost will use this again as a red line. We go on. This one I found hilarious. Um, this is from, I'm going to butcher his name, Ant- Antonello um, Guerrera, Guerrera, saying, New, on the fact that Northern Ireland has economically recovered faster and better than other UK nations, see ONS data from the COVID pandemic, maybe because of its status quo EU single market plus UK customs union, this is what a UK government senior official told him today. Trade diversion can lead to growth and recovery. No, no, not really. Trade diversion can't do that. Um, But it's still a trade diversion. Actually, trade and where it comes from is really politically sensitive in Northern Ireland. Well, clearly, there's a slight majority in favour of the Northern Ireland Protocol, maybe because they're not facing a lot of the problems we're facing in GB right now. And for an important community, if your trade is no longer coming from Great Britain, but it's coming from the EU, the fact that your shelves are still full is not a compensation for the fact that you now feel more undercut from the rest of the United Kingdom with all the political consequences of that UK senior official. And I'm, I'm going to stress this really importantly for people in you know those unionists in Northern Ireland who think doing trade with GB is so important, right? I would rather have full shelves than anything else so I can get access to the stuff I want without having to shop around and having to pay more for these goods. I don't care where the goods come from as long as they are of good standard and they will not harm me when I consume them unless I am choosing to eat junk food. So no, this argument that oh yeah our shelves are full but we want British goods. No, no, no you don't. 
if you can get full shelves, take it because at the moment in GB, we are struggling right now, pal. We are struggling big time. We're going to struggle with uh, turkeys, with alcohol, with other toys and stuff. If you guys can get all that stuff, be grateful. Be grateful, dog, that the Northern Ireland Protocol has spared you the problems we are facing now because we are looking at full customs checks for imports coming in next year, which is something you guys are not going to face. So, yeah, I'd be very happy with the situation if I was in Northern Ireland right now regarding trade, etc. So they're arguing that, oh, yeah, it's fine. They've, you know, they've got full shelves, but they're not British goods. These aren't sovereign goods. Oh, these people, man. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Before I have an absolute meltdown and my head explodes, um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Britain finally drops this demand for the um, the ECJ to be removed from the Northern Ireland Protocol. I mean, it was going to happen. I think it was going to happen. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, shouts out to the person who shared this article with me. Um, always appreciate your help. Um, support me on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.